how to do a parallax hyperlapse on the DJI Mavic Air. So the Mavic 2 has this ability to do parallax hyperlapse shots. I wanted to see if I could replicate that same effect on a drone that's half the price. And as you can see at the beginning of this video, I was able to pull it off. I'm gonna show you how to capture this on the Mavic Air and then how to edit it in After Effects. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so once my drone is launched and I've framed up my shot, so I'm going to click on Active Track. Then I'm gonna set my speed to 2.2 .2 miles per hour. And then I'm going to click on Trace. So what you'll do is you go to your camera settings and you'll click on the M and go ahead and adjust your shutter speed and your ISO accordingly to what you want. Okay, so what I'll do next is I'll come over to my camera settings and I'll go to photo and then I'll change it to time shot at five seconds. Also, I'm gonna make sure that it's set to JPEG plus raw. Okay, so this next part is key. What you're going to do is you're going to pick an object on the screen that you want to track around. And what you'll do is you will pinch with your fingers and select that object. And then you should see a little button that says go. Go ahead and press that button. So down below you'll see two arrows. These arrows indicate which way you want your parallax to go and how fast you want your parallax to go. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm going to set it to 3% in the left direction. Keep in mind you want it to be slow so that way you have time to get your time lapse. And once it starts going, I'm going to go ahead and click the button in the far right to start the time lapse. Now you notice for the first few seconds, it may not be moving around. Be patient. After a few seconds, it should start moving very gradually around the object. Make sure that you're doing this off a fully charged battery. Otherwise, you'll only be able to get about 24 frames, which is equivalent to one second of video. Okay, so let's jump on over to Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so to start off, I'm gonna double click on my project window pane here. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and click import. Okay, so the camera raw filter will come up, so we'll go ahead and do a little bit of color correction here. And then, and then when we're done, we'll go ahead and click okay. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my clip and I'm gonna go down to interpret footage and then I'll click on main and then I'll go ahead and assume the frame rate you can set it to 30 frames per second or 24 so I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 24 and then we'll click OK okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag and drop my clip down onto my timeline Okay, so let's go ahead and have it play back in real time. So to do that, I need to render out the video. And this might take a second or two. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now without any stabilization. And it doesn't look too bad, actually. Okay, so to stabilize it, we're simply going to use our warp stabilizer. So we'll go up to effects and presets here. So we can type in W-A-R-P and then we'll click on warp stabilizer and then we'll hold the mouse button down and then drag it and put it on top of our clip and then let go. Okay, now we're gonna have to give it a few minutes to analyze. So go ahead and hang tight for this. So we'll go ahead and render it out again by pressing zero. Okay, so to export this, I'm gonna go up to Composition, and then I'm gonna go to Add to Render Queue. And then for Output Module. Now, whatever you wanna save it to, you can choose, um, but this is the, these are the settings that I'm going to do. So I'm gonna to go to my Output Module and click on Lossless. I'll change the format to QuickTime. And then I'll click on Format Options. And I'll just go ahead and save it as Apple ProRes 422. And then I'll click OK. And then I'll click OK. 
Okay, and then I can click here to say where I want it to go. So we'll just go ahead and call it uh, parallax. And then I click render. And once it's done, you should be able to open it up and then put it into Adobe Premiere and edit it or any other editing software that you have. Hopefully that video was helpful. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell button. Thanks for watching. Thank you.